Y antes de pasar a leer la Before reading the declaration, I think two things have been very important in this forum. First, we have shown that politically we can go beyond and we can work together. It's been a very fruitful experience for us, and I would like to thank all the colleagues that have organized the forum in Catalonia. So thank you very much. First European South Forum, Declaration of Barcelona. This is the time to end austerity and inequality. It's time for democracy and solidarity. Time to change Europe. The struggle for change in Europe has begun. The overthrow of the Greek memorandum government is an important step that will be completed on January the 25th of January, January 25th, 2015, by the imminent grand electoral victory of Syriza. This victory will not be confined also to the restoration of democracy in Greece. It will be expanded to stop the humanitarian disaster inflicted on the Greek people. It will send a strong message to all the peoples of Europe, and especially of the southern countries, that would portray the following. The Merkelism is not invincible. Austerity can be stopped. Europe can change. We the representatives of political parties, social movements, trade unions, and other social activists of the South, European South that met in Barcelona at, on the first European South Forum express our determination in common to work together in order to defeat the neoliberal austerity strategy that has been brutally imposed in our countries through the Troika's memorandums. Together, we promote a collective and concrete alternative for a progressive exit from the crisis in the direction of the reestablishment of Europe on the basis of democracy, solidarity, and social and environmental sustainability. We do not face the current crisis as if it were either a series of national abnormalities or as a conflict between Northern and Southern Europe. Instead, starting from the South, our priority is to enlarge the European front of resistance against neoliberalism and push forward European solutions that will strengthen the unity of the peoples of Europe against the current resurgence of austericide, reactionary, chauvinistic, and extreme right-wing projects and forces. The future of the Eurozone is not jeopardized by our plan for an immediate break from austerity and an alternative strategy for economic and social development. On the contrary, it is jeopardized by the destructive austerity that is being imposed by the neoliberal establishment under the guidance of the present conservative majority in Europe. Therefore, in order to put an immediate end to the European crisis and to rescue the idea of the European people's unity and European citizenship, we urgently need a policy change. A Green New Deal for Europe. The European economy has been suffering six years of crisis, with an average unemployment around 12 percent. The dangers of a 1930s-style deflation is on its doorstep. Europe could and should collectively borrow at low interest rates to finance a program of economic reconstruction, economic ecological transition and sustainable and social development with emphasis on investment in people, social protection, public services, energy, technology, and needed infrastructures. 
The program would help crisis ravaged economies to break free from the vicious cycle of recession and rising debt ratios to create jobs and to sustain recovery. Two, defeating unemployment. The average European unemployment is today the highest since official records began. Today, almost 27 million people are unemployed in the European Union, out of which more than 19 million belong to the Eurozone. The official unemployment Eurozone average has risen from 7.8% in 2008 to 11.5% in August 2014, for, for Greece from 7.7% to 26.4%, and for Spain from 11.3% to 24.4% during the same period. We urgently need a major job creation plan which will create through targeted European and national public investment supported by the ECB, secure, stable and dignified employment and viable life prospects for millions of Europeans, Europeans especially young people, women and immigrants who have been brutally victimized and relegated to social exclusion. Three, credit expansion to cooperative and small and medium-sized firms. Credit conditions in Europe have deteriorated sharply. SMEs firms have been hit especially hard. Thousands of them, particularly in the crisis high heat economies of the European South, have been forced to close, not because they were not viable, but due to the absence of credit fluidity and the lack of demand. The consequences for job have been dire. Extraordinary times require non-conventional action. The European Central Bank should follow the example of other central banks all around the world and provide cheap credit to banks on the strict precondition that those same banks increase their lending to small and medium-sized enterprises with a corresponding amount. Fourth, suspending of the new European fiscal framework as a precondition for the exercise of a truly sustainable and developmental fiscal policy. Fifth, a genuine European Central Bank, lender of last reserve for member states, not only for banks. The commitment to act as lender of last resort should be unconditional and should not depend on the conditioning or submission of a member state's agreement to a reform program with a European stability mechanism. Six, macroeconomic and social readjustment. Countries with surpluses should do as much as deficit countries to correct macroeconomic imbalances within Europe. Europe should monitor, assess, and demand action from countries with government account surpluses in the form of a stimuli in order to alleviate the unilateral pressure on deficit countries. The current asymmetry in the adjustment between surplus and deficit countries does not harm the deficit countries alone, it harms euros as a whole. Seventh, the European Glass-Steagall Act. The aim is to separate the commercial from the investment banking activities and prevent such a dangerous merging of risks into one uncontrolled entity. Eighth, effective European legislation to tax offshore economic and entrepreneurial activities. Ninth, a European debt conference with the participation of all the public members involved at a state, European and international level, inspired by the London Debt Agreement of 1953, which essentially relieved Germany of the economic burden of its own past and thus assisted the post-war reconstruction of the country. Such conference must come up with a solution negotiated and adapted to each country for each creditor and bone holder, including the partial restructuring of terms and interest rates, the abolition of a large part of the public debt, and the introduction of a growth clause for the repayment of the remaining part. In in that context, all available policy instruments should be employed, including the European Central Bank acting as last resort lender to issue a special euro bonds that would either replace national debt or lead to a significant debt forgiveness. Tenth, a resolute fight against fraud and corruption and the crony capitalism suffered by our countries. With a committed struggle against patriarchy, inequalities, and against racism and xenophobia. Before and after the outputs of the crisis, ideas as those proposed above were treated by the neoliberal establishment 
as illusionist and populist. Today, such ideas that formulate a concrete alternative against austerity are becoming more and more assumed and defended by our peoples and complete for social and political majorities in a number of European countries. It's high time we transform popular discontent and aspiration into a massive political wave of change for the establishment of economic democracy, popular sovereignty, and environmental sustainability. The year 2015 can signal a new historical cycle of progress for our countries and Europe. It's time to make markets pay. The drift to increase inequality and precarious employment is not a real option for working people in Europe. Market structures affect protective institutional arrangements, such as welfare states, industrial relation rules, political systems, and other societal uh, arrangements, in a way that Europe is stepping back from human rights and the burden of economic adjustment is not all shared equally across European societies. Therefore, we, the forces and organizations gathered here, commit to work in a coordination and provide the political and social mom momentum to achieve these changes. Monitor the social and economic performance in our countries and our continent. Foster the European Conference on Debt and assure continuity to the work of this forum. And from this promoting team and with the incorporation of all parties and organizations here gathered and the ones still to come, bolster new and future editions of this forum. See you at the next forum that we propose to be held in Athens. Radio Bustina Fima.